Hello my friends! In this tutorial I'll show you how to paint a Venetian mask. But before that, MGR Gallery t-shirts such as this one that I'm wearing today are available on Amazon. I'm going to put the link in the description below. Now let's get to the tutorial! So, let's begin. With black, I am tracing the most important elements of the mask, which are the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. I already have uh, a sketch that I did before with pencil, and now with a, um, a very thin brush, I'm applying red where are the lips. I'm not alternating here, I'm not putting any gradient, it's just that I am placing the major elements of my mask. And now with a bigger brush, I'm going to paint black all over. This would be the background. I choose black because it will create a huge contrast in between a bright mask and a dark background. Now on the left side, they're gonna be feathers, so I'm gonna leave some areas unpainted. The mask will be golden accent, so I'm going to redo those elements that I traced before, but this time I'm going to work in gradients and I'm going to work in shades. So where is the darkest I'm going to place the orange and where is the brightest I'm going to paint in yellow. Now on the top I'm going to place a few roses. Now I'm not going to put too many details on those roses because the mask is so heavily ornamented that they're not going to stand out too much. The next part I'm going to name it the face. What it is, it's the biggest part of the mask. And here I will go with the basic facial feature. And I will use the gradient, the darkest and the um, brightest area to suggest volume. And here I'm going to go from the dark to the brightest. And then I'm going to place a few bright areas on the cheeks, a few on the corner of the mouth and underneath the eye. Then I'm going to place a few darker accents and I will blend everything so it would be a soft transition. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to put my stronger accents with the darkest gray and then I'm going to blend softly everything. Here the secret is to work in layers and to blend until you are happy with the way it looks. So if at some point you're unhappy with what it is, give it just a few minutes to dry and then start over and do it as you don't have anything painted yet. And blend it, blend it and you will see how beautiful it will look at some point. So it's a matter of perseverance and don't give up. Two more things to do before I finalize the face is one, I'm going to use white to highlight the face and two, I'm going to use a darker gray around the eyes to create depth. And with that, I'm going to blend everything. But I believe I already mentioned blending so many times. And the reason why I enhance it is because that will create softness to, and that will add a more natural look to our painting. Okay, let's move on. For the next part, we're gonna change the colors. We're gonna use red, yellow, and white. 
For the inner corner and for the outer corner of the eyes, I'm going to use the red and the darkest browns and for the area in the middle, I'm going to use yellow and orange. And um, as you already know, a Venetian mask is heavily decorated with feathers, with sparkles. Sometimes they put jewelry on it with flowers, everything that will create decoration. A mask is a um, it's a festival of decoration on itself. Now, in order to uh, replicate some of the abundance of decoration and the, um, the beauty of a, of a mask, I'm going to use yellow and I'm going to use different tones of yellow here and I'm going to vibrate it with red to create a warm uh, yellow. And I'm going to place my curvy lines all, um, all over my mask. Now, when it comes to my lines, I choose to do them asymmetrical. Of course, if you would like, you can use symmetry. There's, there's another good idea. But for me, I, um, I chose to, to do it this way. As I move on with my decorations, I want to tell you shortly about one of my trips in Venice where I've seen a San Marco square flooded. It was very interesting to see the water coming from underneath. The access inside the basilica was made through mini bridges that they uh, put there overnight. So the entire square was mostly a labyrinth where you cannot go unless uh, you use those mini bridges that they were, they were placed there. So it seems that somehow the authorities in Venice, they were prepared for the flood. So they bring with a night before, they bring, they bring all the little, um, call it mini bridges. I don't even know what they were exactly. And they place it on there so that people can travel from one side to the other of the square. So the next day when the water level rises and the entire square was full with water, uh, people were able to go uh, easily from one side to the other using those uh, mini passages. Anyway, it, it was a very interesting experience um, to, to see it. It was, it was nice. Um, some part was um, scary to see, um, and I say scary in a um, mostly in a concerning way. And I had the chance of talking to some local people, and they were concerned about the integrity of the building because there's so much water underneath and there's so much flood coming in and out every year that will um, somehow affect the structure of the buildings, the roads and uh, everything that there were there. Anyway, it was uh, interesting. Now let's move on to the painting. For the lips, I've chosen a intense red and I added yellow for the areas that are brighter and little black for the darkest part. Now for the forehead, I chose to place a few decorative elements. And for that, I'm going to use mostly wet color. So for this, I'm going to use black. I'm going to put a few lines. And then while it's still wet, I'm going to draw some lines. Because um, I like the effect when, it's the, when the painting is wet. Because the brush will drag some of the color that it's underneath. In the middle, I'm going to place a green stone. And for that, I'm going to put first the darkest area. Then I'm going to do the overall color. 
and afterwards I'm going to go with details but I'm going to let it dry first in the meantime I'm going to paint a uh, green rose or maybe I should call it a green flower and for this I'm going to use white black and green in painting you can do things two ways one it's to start with one side and work it until it's done and then you move on to the next and then to the next until it's all finished or you can do what i'm doing right now and that is jump from one side to the other now i'm happy to to show you this because this is a creative process that means that as we work we filter and we decide what to keep what to cover what to reshape and we also decide if it's the right color if it needs to still work on it if it's symmetrical if it looks well with what i already painted so here you're gonna see me covering some areas and reshaping for example, here I'm going to add more on top of what I already did because I wasn't happy with the way it looked and I wanted a different type of feathers. And then I'm going to add, of course, a few highlights to add more texture to the feathers. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And I'm going to finalize my painting with a light touch-ups where I think it needs just a little accent. And this is my Venetian mask. I'm looking forward to see your version of the mask. So please tag me on Instagram at Mihaela Gimlin. I'm going to put all the details in the description bar. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.